I'm telling you guys right now, you don't need this just to drop shot. What's up guys, welcome back to the Monster Bass channel. I am Alex Epperson, Oklahoma's worst angler, and today I'm just gonna talk about drop shots. And I mean like right now is the time to drop shot. And the reason I say that is I think a lot of people think of drop shotting, you know, obviously because it's a finesse technique that it's for when it's a little bit slower, a little more pressured, colder water, colder temperatures, which are all true. But right now, fall transition, fish are feeding up. Now is the time to throw the drop shot because it, it is fall transition. These fish are getting heavily pressured because we all want to catch them. But I'm telling you, you do not have to be throwing a drop shot on a spinning rod. Now right here, I've got the X-Zone Hot Shot Minnow. And you can see my weight is missing and that's because, well, it got snagged up and broke off. But first off, I got to give credit where credit is due. And what I'm talking about is actually the kind of the whole premise and the idea, the base idea for this video. Me and Jeremy, fishing the Lone Star, were talking. And he was like, you know, man, like, I just, I think that too many people get caught up in thinking that you have to drop shot on a spinning rod. And I said, no, absolutely not. Like, I've, I've drop shot on a bait caster many times. And not just a BFS setup, but on a medium power rod. A medium power rod with a regular 100 to 150 size reel. I have done it multiple times. I've caught multiple fish on it. Now, am I throwing a little three inch, or is this two and three quarter inch? Oh, three and a quarter inch, okay? A little three, three and a quarter inch hot shot minnow or a hazadong shad or a spark shad. Am I throwing those on a bait caster? Not normally, no. And if I am, I'm bumping the weight up. I'm gonna use at least a quarter ounce weight. Now the weights that I'm gonna be using, same as the hooks, I've got to have the little quick snaps. So your line slides right in there, you pull it up taut, you've got your line right there, you've got your leader for your weight right there. The hooks that I'm using, these are my personal favorite hooks, and you know what, I mean, some <laughs> monster bass might get mad at me for saying this, but these are the Gamakatsu little G finesse hooks, is what they are. And you've got a swivel up top, and then you've got the snap for your weight leader line on the bottom. This is a little size one right here. A little size one. That is what I'm going to be using for like the hot shot minnow or for, um, you know, your smaller swim baits, your more finesse stuff. Typically, I will be throwing this kind of setup, a 1 8 ounce, most of the time little teardrop, drop shot weight with a size one G finesse hook on spinning gear, on a medium light power rod, sometimes a medium power rod. But if I'm gonna be throwing it on a bait caster, that is when I'm going to be going with a bigger bait. And I'm gonna be throwing like a one aught, or this right here I think is even a two aught. That is a big drop shot hook right there. That is, that's a, that's a beast of a drop shot hook. Now we got it in focus there. But again, you can see it does have that quick snap for your weight leader line and then a swivel up top. Now, why do I like these? It just makes it simple for me. I'm not having to tie, you know, a Palomar, make sure that the tag end is coming through on the hooks, you know, to make sure that that hook is going vertical or horizontal rather <laughs> is going horizontal to make sure that the presentation of that bait is staying straight in the water column. So, they're a little more expensive, but I have the best luck with them. That's why I use them. Now, when I'm talking about upsizing my bait, am I talking like, you know, a swim bait, swim bait? Say like this guy from Fish Lab? No, I'm not talking like that. I'm talking like the biggest I'm going to go is the 4-inch Swammer from X-Zone. Now, I know some people are probably going to be thinking like, I mean, but you can't drop shot a swim bait. It just doesn't swim the same. If you're not rigging it correctly, you're absolutely right. If you're rigging it incorrectly, yeah, you're right. But I'm going to show you guys the best way that I have found 
to rig these guys, especially in the fall and the spring, when fish are moved up, when they're feeding up, meaning they're feeding more shallow, okay, they're pushing bait up towards the bank, they're feeding up. That's what I'm talking about. So I'm going to take that drop shot hook right there. And what I'm going to do is I am going to make sure that you know, I'm center on the nose, on the belly of this swim bait, to where I'm going to be pushing it up into the nose. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to stop right there. So that's not quite straight, but you get the gist of it, okay? So I've got my drop shot hook. I've got my rig, you know, my swim bait rigged up like this. And what that allows that bait to do is stay straight on that hook, okay? Because the actual hook point and the shank are in the nose of that bait, and they're helping to keep it straight on there. Most of the time when you're thinking about, you know, drop shotting, what you're going to be doing, or uh, it seems that what most people do, is they just go from the belly straight through the top of it, and then they've got it rigged like so. That is not how I rig my drop shots. No, not, not anymore, never again. I do not do that. I bring that hook point halfway through the belly, and then I start pushing that and feeding that up through, almost through the tip of the nose. Because what that allows me to do, this one's been used up a little bit, but what that allows me to do is to still get that, that horizontal presentation, but I can put that into the heavier cover. I can put that around the grass. I can put that around, you know, the brush piles, lay downs, timber, I mean, just a lot of different things that you normally wouldn't do with a drop shot because you're dealing with a finesse swim bait and you've got a very sharp, very sticky finesse hook completely exposed. And you can see on like little swim baits like that, you rig them like that, they're gonna swing all over the place. And that's not very natural. That's not very natural presentation. This is why I rigged them like this because this guy right here is not flopping all over the place. I'm getting the action of the swim bait itself. The tail is kicking, but the nose is staying straight. It's staying true. This is not something that you're gonna be sitting there burning, okay? But you can slow swim it over the grass. Let the weights be down in the grass. Keep this right above the grass, you know, or timber, you know, whatever kind of structure that you're dealing with, whatever kind of cover you're dealing with, but that right there. And this is the guy that you can go and throw on your bait casting setups. I mean, most everyone has got like a medium power rod for jerk baits. So, right now, now's the time to go and test this out. Get a drop shot set up, okay, and go throw it on that medium power rod. I'm, I mean, I'm telling you, like, you're going to be amazed at the amount of fish that you catch by doing this presentation right here, whether it be a four inch, whether it be a three inch, you know, whatever it may be, but do this right here. Rig it just like this, fish it up shallow, fish it in the pressured areas, you're gonna catch them. But again, you do not have to be using spinning gear just to be successful on a drop shot. Is it preferred? Yes. Is it probably, you know, the, uh, I wouldn't, I mean, the better technique, the better way to drop shot? Yeah, I would say yeah, because, I mean, well, res results kind of speak for themselves. But for the guys that, you know, sit there and say, like, oh, I don't throw a spin rod, you know, it's a freaking fairy wand. Then they go home and, you know, kiss their dads on the mouth, and then, you know, they feel better about themselves. I'm not that guy. I mean, I, I will throw a spinning rod. I love throwing spinning gear, and that's not a dig at Jeremy because he doesn't throw a spinning rod at all. I don't think he know, even knows how to hold one, but that's you know, besides the point. Get out there. Fish it different. Show these fish something different, okay? I'm telling you, like, you really will be amazed just by rigging a drop shot swim bait, a bigger swim bait just like this right here. You will be amazed at the fish you catch. Now... As far as hook sets and, you know, like your hookup ratio, that's why I like that 2 watt because I've got a lot of room when that fish hits that thing, that's going to slide right down. My hook point is exposed. Now I got them pinned. So, then all you got to do, bring them back in, 
slide that guy right back in, keep that barb right there. And then again, look, that nose and the head of that bait is not going anywhere. Show them something different, okay? Throw your trick worms, the ones that you would normally throw on a shaky head. Like, I feel like I'm sponsored by X-Zone, but I've got the MB Fat Finesse Worm. This right here, throw this guy on a drop shot. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, like, especially the X-Zone products because they freaking float. Okay, this is one that you can work slow. This is one that I would not say swim because, I mean, it's not a swim bait, but put this guy on a drop shot. You will be amazed at the size of fish that will eat something that you think is just too big for a finesse setup. Speaking of which, my next video, we'll be talking about shaky heads and showing you guys, you know, some fish that you probably wouldn't have thought would have eaten a worm like this but that's for another time that's coming up thanks for watching guys i appreciate every single one of you if you are not subscribed to the monster bass channel yet hit that little red button right down there subscribed is kind of a hard word to say anyways i'll see you guys next time we're on the water